everyone. Welcome to our Adobe Max first takes here in Europe. We just came off the keynote with Rufus, Simon, and plenty more sharing their favorite kind of updates, but also some nice interviews with Lucy. I just caught that live. So today we're um, showing our first takes. So what's new on the Creative Cloud? We have a bunch of updates to show you. Um, we'll put up the schedule just so in case you're with us in the next few hours, we have plenty to show you. We'll be starting right now with photography with Joe's here with me. We'll be going to graphic design on Illustrator with Yulia Ziga, some illustration on Fresco, and then video, motion, and Adobe Express, of course. Our last session will be a Q&A live with Tony Harmer, who is in LA. Lucky Tony. Um, he'll be also kind of telling us what's happening on the ground. We'll have plenty of questions for him. So ask your questions in the chat. I can see there's already plenty of you on the Max website tuning in. Um, we have Nicola, we have um, Alessandra, Eva, of course, Joe, who's here with me. Um, so do ask your questions during the next 25 minutes. All right, Joe, yeah. what do you have for us today? Uh, well, we're going to run through some photography stuff. Um, <laughs> but first of all, it's fun to do a stream in person. I know, we, right? We've we're not back. done a stream together in ages. Um, you know, all the regular Adobe Live stuff. It's almost too much. So, we're like at the lights. Yeah. <laughs> as much as we're jealous of Tony being in LA, uh, I'm actually very happy to be here in Munich. Yeah. So, I know you haven't traveled for this, but I have. So. <laughs> it was a really far journey from home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So we're going to go into uh, photography stuff. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a travel photographer. I do a lot of um, video work on YouTube, sharing my journeys and stories about photography. Um, so kind of going around, I sort of specialize mostly in urban um, and kind of going for the big sort of vantage viewpoints. That's, uh, that's sort of my thing. Um, so I've got some images uh, that we'll run through and I'll show some of the editing and um, some of the features that I think are standing out to me that have been updated in Lightroom. And then we've got a few things in Photoshop as well um, and we'll run through into those. So let me switch to Lightroom. Uh, so the updates came out yesterday. Um, so I got those installed. And the things that stood out to me first and foremost are the new masking updates. Um, so I've got some images here. These are from a recent trip uh, to New York. Quite obviously, that is the New York skyline. <laughs> um, so if we jump into the masking section over here, you'll see that this has kind of been uh, redesigned. Um, so it now just sort of splits things out into a few extra details. Before, it used to be a bit of a drop down. Now we've got more of a menu. So we can uh, select our subjects, our skies, and our backgrounds. Uh, we can also go further into people. But let me first show you with, say, the sky. So if I'm doing a bit of an edit here, um, it could be that I wanted to create a mask and I wanted to affect just the sky uh, details. So of course this was in Lightroom for a little while. Uh, I believe it has been updated, improved a little bit. So I can make my adjustments and I can affect things just the sky. Um, and you can see it's even applying some level of transparency, I believe. So if we hover over, you can see on the World Trade Center here, we do actually have like a little bit of pink shining through, but if we make our adjustments, it's not actually affecting it fully, um, which is quite useful. Again, don't go too far with this because things can look a little bit fake, um, but I quite often enjoy just bringing down the highlights ever so slightly because uh, sometimes, you know, cameras blow out and other things. But where this becomes really useful is when you start to compound your masks together um, and maybe start inverting them. So let's say uh, we've got our sky mask here, and of course, always name your masks. Uh, so let's just call this one You're sky. You're a trusted source for naming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've just got a little bit of a mask here, just doing a slight effect. And in fact, you know what, I'm gonna warm this up uh, ever so slightly. Yeah. Just change the hue a little bit. Um, and we can do another one. And we could do select subject, and this will probably select just the skyline. But you see, it's not selecting the water. Um, so let me show you how inverting masks can sometimes be a benefit to you. Uh, so I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to do select sky again, but this time I'm going to invert it. And now we've got everything but the sky, uh, which is great. So if I want to do some extra adjustments and tweaks and things, so maybe just raise up some of the shadows um, and do some other things like this. And just the two sort of together, uh, you can quickly get results on stuff. Um, and 
it's just far easier because previously what I probably would have done is I'd have gone to linear gradients and then I'd maybe use the brush and I'd mask things out. Um, so this is great as like a, a quick way of doing stuff and likewise you can always add, you can subtract. So if I did want to add in some extra things, maybe, you know, just for argument's sake, let me show you with the brush. So I'm adding in a new brush layer and I could paint over and you see that I now have this brush adding to my mask. So any effects that I do, let's just make it dramatic. You see that I can sort of add those in um, super easy and uh, pretty convenient. Let's obviously not do that. <laughs> um, and let's give this one foreground. Um, cool. So masking the sky, selecting things uh, and using it to advantage is pretty powerful. But we can take things a little bit further. So let's go back into our mask and we can create a new one. And now we have the option for objects. So before it used to be just subject, I believe. I think that might have been right. Um, but now in objects, we can use what's similar in Photoshop. Um, and we can either use the brush, so you see uh, over on the right hand side here. Um, and I could just paint in, and I could say, I want this building. I'm going to do that pretty rough and ready. And boom, there we go. So now if I wanted to affect just the World Trade Center, let's say I wanted to maybe make that a little bit more blue, a bit more reflective of the sky, or maybe warm it up in particular, or it could be that I want to just bump the highlight ever so slightly, um, super useful. You could go you know, a lot further on things, and again, you could then invert these masks, and you could use that to do everything but the World Trade Center. Or you could go hectic and do object select and choose other buildings, and you could maybe go for these, Let's just see how that works. Worked out pretty well. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the name of this building, so I'm just going to call this one Building 2. And this one WTC. Um, so again, you can do all your little selections. And this I find quite exciting, because if I was to you know, do my photography in viewpoints and other things, let's say we've got, uh, let's maybe not go for another New York one. Um, Something that's maybe got a couple of things in it. Let's say something like this. Um, so again, we can take a skyline and in the develop module, go into our objects. And because I haven't created any masks yet on this particular image, uh, we're back to this menu. So again, we go to our objects. And this time, instead of doing the brush option, which was where I just paint over like this, I'm actually going to do the uh, marquee tool and so this we then just draw a box and I say I want the shard boom there we go so from here I could then make some adjustments I could maybe just brighten it uh, again don't want to go too far in it but just those little tweaks that's enough uh, that I find anyway in my edits that just adds like that extra little bit of sort of depth to things um, you can really just like push things because if you did this overall on the image suddenly everything's screaming for your attention uh, but being able to do it individually uh, is quite useful. And again, always name your masks. Um, we have a lovely um, a couple of people in the chat who are asking and commenting about masks, and Clara here has been helping out with some links. So we have extra information and resources for you as well um, to go and mask after the session. <laughs> and name, not mask. Yeah. Mask and name. <laughs> yeah, mask and name, always name. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's say, uh, for example, we want to work with um, some pictures of people. Uh, in this case, I've got a picture of myself, um, and this is a new avatar that I want to work on. And so I could do you know, all sorts of little effects and adjustments. These are just applying across the whole image. And let's just tweak this down, and just going to do a very rough and ready. So I'm kind of looking overall at the image here. So I want the image to be a little bit warmer and I need to reduce uh, some of that green tinge. But you see what it's doing is it's ruining the skin tones. It's just looking not quite right. Um, and again, let's just remove some of that green tinge in the sweatshirt. And if we go into our masks, uh, you'll see that it's now working out and it's found people. And that's found me better than I expected, actually. Um, and it goes what do one you step. mean, better than I expected? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, oh, is yeah. it going to work? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it, um, it catches by surprise. It's going but also, <laughs> notice this, it's, it's found just me and not 
other me. Yeah. This is me in another yeah. dimension. Yeah. yeah. This is that is some skill. Yeah. In fact, that doesn't actually look like my same expression. That yeah. That's a parallel it's universe just the happening angle. there. Yeah. Um, but now we've got some extra stages. Uh, let me just zoom in because we're obviously looking at a vertical image here. Um, so it's found me as an entire person, um, but I can jump in a little bit further and I can specify down. So I could go for face skin plus body skin. Uh, even found my eyebrows, how about that? <laughs> um, and my eye, uh, even details to yeah. my iris and pupils. In fact, we're not going to adjust that because we don't want to affect the whites of the eyes. Um, my lips, you know, a lot of people often say in my videos, like, why are you wearing lipstick? It's like, I just naturally have pink lips, all right? It's, oh, really? It's just how they are. I should read those YouTube comments a little bit more <laughs> to see what you're getting teased for. <laughs> so we're going to create this mask. And now what we're doing is we've affected all the skin tones. And because we've warmed up the image, I can now just cool this down <clears throat> and just bring this back. But because we've not selected um, parts of the eyes, we're not affecting the sort of whiteness uh, to the eyes, which is kind of like a natural thing that you end up looking to. Um, and so we can work with this. And I'm just going to do this very rough and ready. And again, just tweak a little bit. Um, but that, whoops, that to me feels like a very powerful feature. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of questions coming in as well for you, Joe. Um, just want to pick up some things from the chat while you're um, showing these. So Nikolai is saying that these masks are mind-blowing. And we have a couple of questions. Jane is asking if there are similar masking tools in Photoshop now. Uh, yes, so I believe these all transfer across. So I'm just adding a little radial gradient yeah. um, and uh, <clears throat> put these in like this. Um, so the masking and the selection that we've got here, um, let's just... Sorry, I can't help but just not lame. Oh, we've gone a bit German there. Vignette. <laughs> You've been in Munich too long, yeah. Joe. <laughs> You're one of us. <laughs> um, so let's just let's take this this actual image itself. Um, let's go for edit in. Uh, sure, let's do the, the beta. Why not? Um, so is this going to open up? Okay. Uh, so from within here, um, let me go into the object. Uh, select. Uh, apologies if that's a little bit small over there. Um, so object select, and yes, you can go and you can draw a marquee, go around and find people, make a little selection. Uh, it's just one little thing there that we want to tidy up. So I'm just going to hold option and undo that bit. There we go. Um, and so from there, I could do the same edits that I want to do um, in Lightroom. I could do the same in Photoshop. Uh, there is a new feature that I discovered, um, which is when you're in the object selection tool, you've got uh, this drop down at the top for how you want to process that. So obviously this is um, using AI, uh, so Adobe Sensei. And we can either process that on the device, so on uh, in this case I'm on my Mac, um, or you can send it up to the cloud for a split second and it gets more detailed response. So let's maybe compare. Uh, I've not tested it on this image, so let's find out what happens. Improvising. Uh, we are live. We are live. So no panic. <laughs> we have uh, our original layer. I'm just going to hide that one. Let's just call this one original. And let's do, uh, yeah, let's change to the lasso and detect me. OK, and we did. So this was on the device. And let's just create a mask of me. Okay. And now let's do an original one. Let's call this one device. Let's call this one cloud. And again, let's go to our object and let's do cloud. Select subject. This, I believe, should process it in a couple of seconds or so. Um, and then it's worked out. It's found me in the other dimension. <laughs> So let's go for just this one. <laughs> and uh, did that select. And then let's see if we've got any particular improvements. We've got some mm -hmm. slight differences there. Yeah. Um, from what I understand with the way that this is happening is it should do better on things like hair and extra sort of details like those finer things if you've got you know, um, animals and things like that, fur and things like that. Um, should work pretty well. Uh, I should probably point out that I am using the beta version of the software, so yeah. you know, things will change and improve. Um, 
So yeah, the subject select is a pretty cool feature. Uh, let's jump back. And we have a question interrupting you on your <laughs> journey here yeah. um, about sharpening by Ferry in the Max uh, chat. Um, he's asking, or she is asking, um, how does sharpening work? Is it necessary to have sharpening in a photo to have some details? Um, and a couple of people also want joined in on that question. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of a firm believer that um, all images, if you shoot raw, should have some sharpening. Because uh, what generally happens is, and this is potentially more noticeable with um, maybe older cameras, newer cameras, they've got higher resolutions. When you view them smaller, they do look a little bit sharper. Um, but generally, I'd say most raw images should have sharpening. Now, it doesn't mean that they should have sharpening across the board. Um, so let's say, for example, I've got an image like this. Uh, that is processing a little bit. Let's, there we go. Let's go for this one. Um, so instead of sharpening the whole thing, so we've clearly got some background you know, in the bokeh there. Um, so instead of sharpening overall, I would probably do a subject detect or people detect. Uh, let's go for entire person. And uh, we can add to this because it's not detected the camera. We can add, let's go for object and let's go for the brush. Let's see what happens here. Let's just paint in the brush. Go, yep, that please. And now with this mask selected, I would go through and I would add a bit of sharpness. Um, again, don't go too far with this. Uh, things will start to look a little bit ingenuine. But selecting certain areas and working on your sharpness in that uh, can do wonders. Uh, likewise, just a quick little tip here. Um, reduce your contrast. That mm. gives things more detail. Because um, what happens is if you look over in the uh, histogram over to the right here, if I increase the contrast, what it does is it pushes the shadows over to the left side and pushes the highlights out to the right. And so what you're doing is you're just pushing all of that data away from the sort of main element of the frame. So if you reduce your contrast, it actually brings more data together and evens it out. More data, more detail. Um, and Ooh, so... Great one. Yeah, that worked, Oh, didn't it? wow. Yeah. Did you <laughs> That is um, a great one. <laughs> of course, if you, if you jump it too far, then things will look a little bit flat. Um, so you may just then need to tweak a little bit more specifically on your shadows and highlights. Uh, but just a little thing, uh, in particular on hair, is very noticeable mm -hmm. um, with that. So yeah, uh, selecting your areas for sharpening um, is definitely very useful to do. Uh, there was another feature in here, yeah. uh, which is an update to the healing brush and those sort of tools. Uh, so let's find something that we may want to remove. Um, do I have an image that could be suitable here? Maybe something on the road here. Um, okay, so let's say I've got this image, and let me, whoops, see. Nope, not 100%, there we go. Uh, so let's say I just wanted to remove just some of the you know, markings and things on the road. Um, so previously, you would go to the healing brush, and you know, let's say we want to get rid of this road marking. You mark where you want to go, and then you find the area that you want to replace it with, um, and then you kind of play around, and you know, very quickly you end up with just a lot of things everywhere, just patches of stuff. And let's say you then wanted to replace another bit, like here, but you wanted to sample this area, and then later on when you come to edit, you're like, ah, I can't get there because things are you know, overlapping and all in the way. Um, so now there is uh, a content aware, what is the full term called? Content aware remove. Um, so here is just more like a one click wonder sort of thing. So you can just brush over and then it will just automatically replace it and find your area. Uh, if you want to adjust where it's actually sourcing that from, you can hold command. I believe you can just draw a box you can choose where it's actually going to go from. So if I now do this area, you see it's updating a little bit more of the texture from that area. Uh, hopefully you can see where that box is being drawn. Um, so yeah, you can tweak things a little bit more um, cleaner, I'd say, um, and maybe just drop down the opacity if you don't want it to be too, too far gone. Um, and we can just clean up little bits of the road. And this is actually working uh, much faster than uh, previously, which is a nice feature. Everyone likes speed. Let's go fast. And uh, yeah, so this is the content aware uh, remove, 
which is also in Photoshop as well. Um, so depending on where you're going. And I'm using Lightroom Classic, uh, but all these features are also in Lightroom CC, if that's we your weapon of choice. Question. Yeah. Yep. We had a few questions on Behance, um, exactly this one that you're answering now. Um, if you, We are tracking the Behance chat if you're on behance.net slash live. I'm not wrong, but we are uh, mostly on the Max chat. Um, so you can also ask questions there. We're tracking them. We have a lot of awesome feedback. Um, someone just said, I just put it that uh, Stephen tried updating masking tool, masking tool in Lightroom this morning after the updates came through versus trying it yesterday. Incredible improvement. So keep updating. Let us know what you think. Um, it's just great reading what you think of all these features. Definitely. Um, OK, so we've got just a few minutes left. Uh, I'm going to show something that I was playing around with yesterday that I thought was uh, quite mm -hmm. fun. So let's do, uh, let's go original. So I'm going to open this image. Um, so this is a film image. And let's say you want to remaster your old images. I mean, technically, this is an old image. It's six months old. So, <laughs> you know, we can uh, we can call this old. And uh, we want to remaster some film Time work. Time has a different kind of <laughs> concept in your world. Yeah. I mean, five minutes ago is old. True. <laughs> oh, well, we are old then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's say we've got uh, this layer here. And I'm just going to create an original just as a backup. And oops, I've not enabled my shortcut. Uh, so this would be called a new one. And so if we now go into our filter and in the neural filters, um, so these ones you will need to go through. And you may need to download them to your device, um, and they're ready to use. So I've downloaded a few here. Uh, but there's a new one, uh, which is currently in beta, um, and that is the photo restoration. And if we apply that, what this is going to do is it's going to work out how this image could be improved. Um, and so imagine that this was a film image uh, taken in the 90s. Um, and for those who may be interested, this was taken on a Canon A1, um, which is a very fun camera to use. And so this has now applied that restoration. Um, and I can toggle it on and off. We can see immediately that's brought in quite a lot more detail. Um, in particular, look at things like the, the hair um, and you know just a bit more detail around the cup. That's sort of you know showing the edging a little bit better. Um, got a little milk moustache. <laughs> um, and so from here, I could uh, you know, tweak things a little bit more. So I got my photo enhancement over on the side. Uh, I could drop down how much of the enhanced face I want to do, because it's going a little bit too red for my liking, um, and any sort of scratch reductions. Uh, this image actually came out pretty clean to start with, so it's all good. And that's just processing. going to take five seconds or so. Um, but let me show you one. I've got another photo, um, which is going to, this is an old photo. OK, this, okay. Will, be a, this will be a throwback. <laughs> OK. Um, so we've got, there we go, before and after, yeah. um, pretty cool. But let's say uh, we've got mm. this image here. Nice desktop background. <laughs> yeah, ignore the files. That's the messiest it's <laughs> ever been. I was focusing on photos. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> distracting, distracting. OK, so this is me. This is, I oh. I must have been about three okay. at this point. This is or, old. Or four, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, and let's just apply that same, you know, oh, that's going to apply the same aspect that I just did. Let's go neural filters. And notice that this image does have a lot of scratching and details uh, because this is a scan of a print, whereas the previous one was a scan of a negative. Um, so do photo restoration, and boom, there we go. Scratch is gone immediately. I think that's pretty cool. Um, Amazing. Just being able to do that um, pretty much straight on. And uh, We have about a minute or two we have to a go. Minute. It's insane. Okay. Time flies on first takes. OK, <laughs> let me show you uh, just some little things that would, would have speed round. Um, so in, speed round. In preferences, new thing, we can search. Nice. Very cool. So where I was um, showing you how you can process your, on your device or in the cloud, um, new preference here to set the main preference, which will be sticky. Um, so device or cloud there. When you're doing it in the tool, it's just for that moment. Uh, what else we got? Rulers and guides. <coughs> Let's draw in some guides. Uh, individual guides can now be individually colored. Um, so if you're doing any sort of you know, fun work with different things. I could have one set of guides that are red, another set that are cyan, blue, um, and yeah. you could select multiple as well. 
and edit those. Uh, pretty useful feature. Um, and finally, what else can I show you? Like one more, squeeze one in more, one, one more, more, one more update. Let's go for <laughs> no. an object. We don't have time. We don't though. have time. Oh. Wait, time's ticking. <laughs> Too fast. You did really well. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. And thanks, Joe, for the quick round at the end. Um, we had loads of people in the chat. Stay tuned. We're back in five minutes for our Illustrator updates with Julia. Amazing. Thank thanks, you. Joe. <laughs> See ya.